I'm live. What's up? Wow. Hey, people. <laughs> it's been a minute. Wow, what's up, everybody? Hola. All right, guys, so we're going to go live with one of my favorite people in the world. You're <laughs> yeah. How's it going, brother? It's so so nice to see you, man. You look, you look so You're great. Good. As so nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you. So to you, man. Wow. So this is uh, this I is, know, this is the first time we're like publicly officially being taking the most best friends in the world, world right now. I love it, and I love it because uh, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, yeah. man. I'm so grateful I, to you for doing this. I, by the way, everyone who's listening, this watching, down. I know you absolutely love Sean just like I do. Uh, Sean doesn't. You know, doesn't do live so often. He's not always doing things like this. But as an amazing friend, and I want you to just see what a good friend he is, he was willing to do something just for me to help me share what I've been working on for the past couple of years with all of you. So, Sean, I'm deeply grateful to you. I appreciate you more than you know. Uh, and and the thing I appreciate most is is the friendship we've built over the last two to three years, which has uh, been such a fueling... Uh, it's been such a soul feeling relationship in my life honestly and uh any time we're together i feel like i have my favorite conversations <laughs> me too man thank you for saying i mean i couldn't be i couldn't be happier to do this i think i mean all of my closest friends and all of the people who know me uh know how much jay has been there for me over the last few years i think yeah, it's it's been it's been I've had some some really hard moments over the last few years, and you've been there for me in the most beautiful way as a friend and as a teacher. So um, to support you while you're releasing a new book is the most exciting and the the very least I could do. Um, oh, man, I just that, love you so much. That and means I'm, the I'm world so to me. And, uh, I'm so happy for you, man. You know, I, really I, I hope that. You know, you, you say that you've learned from me or that, you know, I've been helpful to you. I think what's so beautiful about our relationship is I've learned so much from you in the process. I think that you're so much more wiser than beyond your years. You are one of the most reflect, reflective, thoughtful, uh, and courageous and brave people I know. I think you've made so many decisions in life already that I would put in that category of being extremely brave and courageous with so many people uh, would struggle to do. And I've, I've honestly never met someone at your age who is so deeply thoughtful and reflective. And I think your community sees that and knows that about you. Uh, and so any, anyone who, anyone who, everything you think about Sean mm. is true. Like, and I want you to know that. I, all, the, all the love you have, all the love you have for this guy is real. It's, it's, he's, he's even better in person. It is even more. <laughs> and I could say the same about you, man. I think I was like I told a few people came up to me. They're like, I just love Jay so much. I just love him so yeah, much. I'm like, I it's, that, you, it's you should. And, it's it's oh, right. He's exactly like that. So, <laughs> dude, you you have wrote an entire book. Oh, I love another it. One. I'm glad that you got it. I'm glad. It's and I have happened. it right here. It comes out in three days. There's literally three days left till it's out. Uh, I. How do you, you know how what, do you right feel, now, how do you it's feel always about it? amazing as an author, about, and, yeah. and I'm sure you feel this as an, as an artist, that when you've made something, you've been in the studio, I've been in my cave almost, like not a real cave, but my cave of writing, uh, to put this book together, it takes like three years for me to like <laughs> research, and I'm reading from ancient wisdom, I'm pulling from modern science, I'm coaching people, I'm sitting down with friends and family, and then all of a sudden you put this piece of work together, and then it's not out there yet, but I've shared it with a lot of people so far. And honestly, the best feedback I've had 
is that it's a workbook and it actually works in the sense that the book is full of exercises, it's full of meditations, it's full of writing yeah. letters to yourself. Like the book is not designed for you to just read it. The book is designed for people to experience it. And I really believe that when people will experience doing the work through the book, that it will work in their relationships. And so I feel really excited and proud. At the same time, it's nerve wracking because it's not out there yet. Uh, but, and, and also reading the audio book, which I just did like probably yeah. Yeah. about a month or two ago when I, when I read and sat, I was in the studio for five hours a day for five days and reading it myself was like a really beautiful experience. Le yeah. Relearning. And so, you know what, the truth is when I've obsessed about learning about love for the last three years, even more. And, and I can honestly say that I learned new yeah. things and had yeah. new revelations while writing a book. And so it, while I was thinking I was teaching, mm -hmm. guiding, coaching, I was actually learning and receiving and receiving. So that's how I feel right now in, in too many words. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so interesting too, because I feel like there's so many books that you read that kind of uh, point out the problem. <laughs> And uh, they kind of just tell you that there is a problem. And you're like, great, now, now I know that there's a problem. What do I do with it? And our friendship actually has been so majorly focused on actual physical, tangible things that you can do to experience more love. I think a lot of the stuff that we've talked about as friends, you know, is, is how to experience more self-love and how that affects love toward a relationship I'm in or, or love toward the world or love towards family or whatever. And I think that for a lot of people, self love can be this kind of, it can be this kind of triggering cringy thing, you know. Um, and then for a lot of people who are curious about self love, they don't actually understand how to do it, how to cultivate it. And I think, I mean, there's so many things in the book that you talk about, but yeah. I mean, be nice, yes. maybe just to yeah, talk well, about I a think, little bit of things like I'm so many so things that we do together, you know, because I think and when people think about, love. you know, when, when people see a book about love and eight rules of love, yeah. I think a lot of people think relationship, dating, you know, marriage or long term relationships. And as you know, this book focuses exactly. heavily in the beginning on, on self love and solitude. And I'm really glad that you brought brought that up because one thing I discovered while writing this book was that we've started using these words in mainstream vocabulary so often, but so often we haven't really understood what those words mean for ourselves. And so when I was writing this book, I was trying hard to just not use these words that we hear all the time that actually make sense to them. And one thing I discovered, which I think is what you've done this year and the work that we've been doing together and the work that you've been doing on your own is that self-care comes from comfort. Like when you create comforts around yourself, it creates self-care. You, you know, like when we hear things like, you know, like sleep in, take a bubble bath, like, you know, like light a candle, like these things are beautiful. And that, um, yeah, and that comfort creates self-care. So, self -care. but what I found is that self-love or self-respect comes from discomfort. And so self-care comes from comfort, but self-love or self-respect comes from discomfort. And I think that's often not talked about enough. Like if you think about what makes you respect yourself, you respect yourself or hold yourself in higher regard when you do something difficult. Yeah, when you go through something difficult. And I think we're but not having that conversation to, because yeah. I think people are doing more difficult things every day than they even know. I genuinely believe that people are going through so much hardship and that's yes. where self-respect comes yeah. from. Like if you sat down and just reflected, everyone who's listening and watching, on the amount of challenges you've overcome that your heart and soul have been through in the last 12 months, I promise you, you'll have so much more courage mm -hmm. and you'll have so much higher mm -hmm. self-esteem. Self-esteem doesn't come from another person saying you're good looking or someone else saying that you're worthy of love. It doesn't come from someone else being attracted to you or into you. It, it comes from you having gone through a process. And I think that's what we've been doing. We've been working on both of us. Yeah. Jay, can you hear me? I've got you. I've got, have, have you got me? Can you guys still hear me? I wonder if this is... 
Okay. You can hear me? Can you? I have you in, in, I have you in, oh yeah, you come back now. Okay, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully you're a little I'm bit good. like, you're a little bit breaking up, but I think you'll probably come back. I, <laughs> it's true, man. It's really true. I mean, I think for me, like, you know, I think if you can hear me, one one of the hardest things that, yeah, one of the hardest things, but one of the most impactful things that um, I have done for myself is go out and like have dinner on my own. And I know it sounds like a little kind of small, but it's really uncomfortable because you're kind of sitting in a restaurant on your own at a table and you're so self-conscious of everybody looking at you and, and what the waiters think and what people think. And this process from like being very uncomfortable and being very self-conscious to becoming one of my favorite things to do I have this like routine of like going out and going to this very specific restaurant on my own to get a coffee. And it feels like this like huge moment for me. And now in, in the cringiest words, but I'll say it, it's like a self date. And that stuff has been super powerful for me. It gives me this feeling of connection with myself, which allows me to feel more self esteem and less insecurity. And that stuff, uh, it comes from being uncomfortable. And you're so right. The, the comfort is beauty and it is, it is such a helpful thing to do, but it's in the discomfort yeah, that we yeah. really you, kind of learn to have self-love and, and self-esteem. Oh, I'm so yeah, I can I hear you. It's, it's, you're it's a little choppy, like, but I, I like think it should be okay. Um, hopefully you can hear me and see me. Do you want me to move, do you want me to move location or are we good? I can move. I can move. I, I think everyone can hear you. Do you want me to move? Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe yeah. try to make, maybe try to move a little bit. Yeah. If, but anyways, this is the, I'll tell these these guys as well who are here. This is a really cool moment for me. This is I'm on the back of Jay's book, guys. This is this, this is a big moment for me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think for for everybody that's that's on here, I guess. You guys don't really know how close of a relationship Jay and I have, but over the last couple of years, Jay has been so extremely um, close and so helpful with uh, this feeling of self-doubt and this feeling of insecurity and this feeling of um, uh, lack of love. And through so many of the things that Jay talks about in the book and more, um, I've really been able to feel a lot more confidence in myself and it ends the process like I say I don't say that with full confidence yet but it's an easy process but um I'm forever grateful for that and I'm just so I'm so glad that you decided to write about that because um yeah we're all obsessed with can you hear love. me now why are we obsessed with love Jay do you know why okay I'm like <laughs> walking around trying to figure out what's yep, going on my we can ca we can hear uh, you now I, need to, I think everyone's like Jay you need to get better wi-fi so I think that's the plan <laughs> but um one second <laughs> okay, everyone's asking where my hair is. I love so it. All right, okay. hopefully you can hear me. And, can you hear me and see me now? Yeah, perfect. So, oh, that's so the truth is that's that better. Roddy's office yes, has that's better, better Wi-Fi than better. my office. That's that's the realization. That's the realization I've had. Um, okay, so we're in the office. But I was just thinking, like, why, why do you think it is that we're so obsessed? Why are we so obsessed with love? Like, why is it that we yearn for it? And like, why is it that it's so fragile once we find it? And it's so hard to keep. That's and a great it question. feels like this, I mean, these highs and lows. If you look at it from like, a what do you think that is? point of view, we're wired to love and be loved. Like, that's how we were made. It's what we were made for. It's our, it's our heart's purpose and service and calling to love and be loved. And I think we all know that because we know that when we have love in our lives, we feel satisfied no matter what else is going on. You know, if, you're, if your love life in terms of your self-love and if you have a partner, if you have a healthy, loving relationship with them, then no matter what's going on outside, you can take care of stuff. But then the opposite is also true. That... Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like and then the like opposite is also true that love, even if like you have the you perfect the external life, but you don't have that love within, you feel really dissatisfied because it's how we're wired. It's how we're created. I think the highs and lows that you mentioned, they come about because of the material view of love or the commercialized view of love where love has been shown to us in particular ways. Like 
I'll give an example of, of what I'm saying to everyone that I think we've been made to believe there's a hierarchy of love. So the love you have with a romantic partner is seen as above any other type of love. And if I ask people to rate the love they have for their mom or their child against their love for their romantic partner, you just say it's different. You wouldn't say it's more or it's better, but I think society has made us feel inadequate or devalued if we don't have a partner or if we don't have a romantic love or we're incomplete because of that. Yeah. I I feel like this, I don't know if this is like a, you know, a sensation is there's a lot of also societal pressure to, to be dating and to be, and to be searching for that. And I, you know, I definitely feel that and I, and I struggle with that often, but um, I think, yeah, there's, it's a, it's a high pressure situation when it comes to love. It's like, why haven't you found it? Why aren't you looking for it? You know, and what's, what's wrong with you? Um, and I think that, it causes a lot of insecurity because I, I think we, we, we yeah. truly don't, yeah, I think, understand point, where man. love that's stems from and, in its core, and I think, in its root. I you think know? other relationships like friendships get devalued. Often you find that when we find someone that we're romantically interested in, we forget about our friends or they forget yeah. about theirs. And I, I think... Exactly. Because it becomes the exactly. highest of value exactly. because it so, also becomes the Yeah, when I was writing this groups. book, I, I yeah. wanted to make it inclusive to not only finding love, keeping love and letting love go, but also ultimately getting to a point of like, how do we learn to love everyone? And, and how do we learn to have loving relationships with, with each and every person, not just with a romantic partner? And so while the book is aimed at helping people navigate relationships and moving in and dating and breaking up, which, which are all important, of course, uh, there's also a side of it where it's like, well, well, what's that deeper inner love that we're all yearning for and seeking? Uh, yeah, and for like the people that are like in relationships right now, um, or have been in relationships, <laughs> yeah. what glad, about this crazy standard that you're not supposed to be fighting? I'm Which, glad you brought that up and like, because what I, mean, is that? And how I do don't you, know and any you relationship that? that I've ever been in where I haven't had a fight. Like, it's just normal. Because as soon as you have two minds with two different sets of trauma, with two different sets of mental health, yeah. with two different sets of backgrounds, you're bound to disagree. And I think the key is you're trying to change. Yeah. I think you said <laughs> it's true, right? So it's just reality. Like, and, too. And, <laughs> and you know, we talk, me and you talk about this all the time, like our own <laughs> mental health. Like so often what makes us argue with our partner is our own insecurity. It's not, it's not necessarily something about them. And what I found, which really helped me, was I discovered this idea that we have different fight styles. And often we want people to deal with arguments in the way we deal with arguments. Mm. And so in the book, I talk about these three fight styles. We have a quiz that helps mm. people figure out which fight style they have. And I realized this through me and my wife. So I'm a classic venter. Venting is... I want to fix it and I want to figure it out right now. That's, the, that's why we get along. That's why we get along. Uh, and, and my wife, my wife is a hider. She's like, yeah. I just need space. I need to be on my own. I need to think about it. I need to reflect on it. And in the beginning of our relationship, I used to say to her, I was like, you don't care about us because I want to talk about it. You want to hide. You want to run away. And she'd be like, no, I do care about it. Yes. Yeah. And so what we've realized was now instead of being upset yeah. that she needs space and I want to talk about it, we'll set a time and say, look, we're going to come back in 12 hours and discuss this so that I feel I get to digest it, but I'm not waiting two days. Yeah. And so the third one is exploding, which is like, I want to talk about yeah. my emotions. Yeah. I want to talk about how I feel. And so none of these are good or bad. And I think if yeah. people were to yeah. learn their partner's fight style, they'd actually be better at dealing with the challenges that come with it rather than just thinking that their partner's unreasonable or wrong or is, is not, doesn't care, doesn't care, exactly. Exactly. Doesn't care about it. So the book's full of these like uh, questionnaires, super, surveys, super quizzes important. that will help you kind of deduce these roles that you play. Uh, I spend a lot of time helping people figure out the types of exes they've dated 
and some of the challenges that come with our repetitive patterns. We keep getting attracted yeah. to the same person again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder like why you end up in the same position again and again mm -hmm. and again. And so. And you think that has a lot to do with the lack of uh, compassion yeah, and understanding of Yeah, it comes back to like us wanting to fill a gap in our lives that. that often was left by a parent or a love but we're yeah. trying to fill it through another person. Yeah. And so you keep finding a new person yeah. with a new name, with a new face, but you're trying to fill the same gap, uh, only coming to the same realization yeah. that the only person who can fill the gap is you. Yeah. And, and what if someone else's job was not to fill your gap, was to help you yeah. grow. But if you, keep, if you keep forcing them to just fill a gap, they can't help you grow. Yeah. Yes. Their job is to, to, exactly. to support you and you to support them, but not fill that hole. Yeah. I mean, it, that's, a, that's a thing at first that is like so daunting and ominous to, to be like, now I got to figure out how to fill this internal hole and I have no idea where to start. But the process, I think you put, you have so many, so many amazing tools, but the process actually, as you start to do it, yeah. you start to feel it kind of give back to you very quickly. Super, super, super quickly, yeah, it, and it's, you start to feel that you know, whole fill been, up you can just from a little bit of attention you've been doing to yourself, you know. And, you know, that's, and it's hard, right? I'm not saying it's easy. Oh, we're not, I, we're not perfect. sitting here, both of us are definitely not preaching and I'm definitely not preaching or teaching it. I'm just saying that it is hard to work on yourself, but it's harder to expect someone to fill it. Like that's way more. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's harder, it's harder to keep feeling pain. Like ultimately, the thing is, like, if, if the 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 constant uh, replay of suffering and pain, it's like that's a harder experience Absolutely. than Absolutely. the uncomfortable and, and, uh, feelings. It's what I love this for sure is because I'm looking at all the comments, and people love you so much. <laughs> it's so great. Uh, there is so much love for you here, and and I think a lot of people are resonating with the conversation we're having. I'm seeing a lot of. Uh, wonderful comments coming in saying, I agree with the point about parents' gaps needing to be filled. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of comments about, you know, uh, um, this, is, uh, this is great. Someone's saying, I just want to say thank you for teaching me something new every day, which is so beautiful that you all have that. Uh, Giselle says, mental health is what I need right now. There's so many people who are, who are looking for that. Um, just share this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's something no. to like, this isn't also, you're not saying like, um, don't date, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Social media time limit went off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not about, you know, saying don't date or if you're in a relationship, get out of a relationship and focus on yourself. It's just about making sure that you're not putting all of yes. your focus on someone else kind of uh, providing that for you. I think that's really important, you know? And, and ultimately too, like, you know, Jay, like uh, I sometimes have this fear, like, am I ever going to be um, stable? I don't know if that's the right word or like, am I ever gonna have enough self love for myself to be prepared to be in a relationship again? And I think that that's just a fear. And I think it's very, very possible to cultivate self love and understanding Absolutely. While really, being in a relationship I, I'm with someone so glad and growing that kind of like, simultaneously. That is such a huge point. Like, I, I, it was really interesting. I was reading a study yeah. that was saying that how in the past, yeah. we used to get into relationships in order to grow up. And now we expect everyone that we're with to be grown up yeah. before a relationship. And, and so times have changed so much where like, yeah. and so I think you're spot yeah. on that yeah. none of this, say it again. No, no, please say that again. Yeah, exactly. And both, so I don't, both, I fully both, agree with you. Both these are, are not linear the things. Time. It's not like, oh, I found myself. Now I'll get into a relationship. Like you're always finding and discovering yourself. Like I've made so many mistakes. I've been with my wife now for 10 years. I've made so many mistakes in those 10 years. I have dropped the ball plenty of times. I've said things I wish I never said. I have behaved in ways that I don't think are my best self, but I've, chosen to change my behavior and up level every time. And if I didn't have 
her there to challenge me in a positive way to mm -hmm. do that, chances are I wouldn't have grown if I was left to myself. And so mm -hmm. even though we should... We're, I mean, we're not, sorry to interrupt you, I was just saying, it's like, yes. we're really not meant to do it on our own. It's so much pressure to put on yourself to have to go through life and grow and do everything right on your own. And that's just not about, you know, a relationship with someone romantically. It's, it's your friends, it's your yeah. family, it's, it's everyone around you. Yeah. Like, we really need each other to be able to grow. That's, that's also how we are wired. So that deep sensation and that deep yes. feeling that is like, yes, yes. I need yes, humans. Yes, absolutely, that's absolutely. And, too, and I feel know? like, our, yeah. We shouldn't change for others, but we will grow more with others. Right? Go and say, yeah, go on, go on, go on. I know where you're yeah. going. Yeah, well, they'll meet first. No, I'm sorry. I gotta say, they, they really, like, I don't know if anyone who hasn't been in a relationship, the second you're in a relationship, it's like they hold up a mirror to you about all your weird little quirks and flaws and they, and they show you that and it makes you reactive, which is a beautiful thing because you can either take it as like offense, Absolutely. which you probably will Absolutely. take that, you can also take it as Ravi has to be like, oh, shown you know, me like, more about that. myself than I could have ever learned on my own, for sure. So I always say to people, you just have to start the journey on your own and know it's your journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and then someone can join you on that journey. Yeah. Uh, and I think the problem is when you make someone else your yeah. journey yeah. Uh, and you want them to take your journey for you, uh, yeah. that's, that's when it's hard. But you're so right that this is, we're not meant yeah. to be doing this alone. We're not meant to figure it out on our own. Uh, and, but, but man, you've been so generous with your time today as well. And yeah. I, I love having these conversations with you and I'm glad we're sharing them with the world because... Uh, everyone, this is, these are conversations me and Sean have every week or, or every few weeks anyway. Uh, and, and I couldn't be more grateful to you for sharing my work with your community, for, for being on the back cover and being so kind to share a beautiful testimonial uh, that I love you for. And uh, I'm so excited for you, your future, uh, personally, professionally. I'm so, I believe in you so deeply with the, the truth you want to put out in the world and, and the genuineness and sincerity yeah. that you lead by every day. And everyone who follows you and uh, loves you should know that you're only ever going to lead them in the right direction. And, and uh, I'm, I'm following with them. Uh, and so I want you to know that, man. I really do. And I'm so grateful for today. And I miss you. And I can't wait to see you. Brother. Well, I'm so happy for you. I'm so excited about this, guys. I mean, this is this is my heart in here. I need. I'm gonna read this probably 50 <laughs> times. But um, I also am lucky because I also have the human Jay Shetty that I can call. <laughs> but if you don't have the human Jay Shetty, this is this is your second option. <laughs> um, I love you, man. I'm so proud of you. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah. I'm, I'm thankful. I know this is very for, different. For so that's and I'm and grateful to us. Chat, for everyone though. who's asking, there's been a lot of comments saying they, they loved our conversation and where do we get it? Um, the book is available at eightrulesoflove.com. So it's just the name of the book and .com. Uh, and of course, at Barnes & Noble or Amazon or wherever you go. So if anyone does want to read the book or listen to it, uh, if you prefer to listen to the audio book, uh, I read it out too. So eightrulesoflove.com is where you'll find it. Uh, but Sean, I'm excited to see you, man. I miss you and uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for this and I'll see you soon, man. Thank you. Thank you to you. I'll see you soon. Please. And I'm, and I'm going to say this uh, thank to, you, to my page. I appreciate so anyone it, who thank wants you. to rewatch this can rewatch uh, thanks, this. For, thanks for being, you, that right. was a very professional love interview you, of you while my, love, my connection you is going out. You like, yeah, I was like, I'm impressed. This is, this is, <laughs> you're going to take my job at on purpose. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this is very <laughs> nice. I love it, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, bro. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Bye, guys. Bye.